Uh, yeah, so every uh, two week, two or 18 months or so, I take inventory about what my facial hair growing abilities are. Uh, every 18 months or so, I'm disappointed because it's no better than it, it was before. So that's what's happening right now is I'm just seeing where everything's at before getting rid of it. We are out here at Redding Anthracite right now. This pit, uh, last time I was here, didn't really exist. So this is way different. Anthracite is a type of coal. It's a really high grade kind of coal. You can see one of the seams of coal that they've exposed and mined. The coal here in Pennsylvania is completely different than the coal we've seen in Mississippi or North Dakota or any of the lignite. Lignite's in layers, whereas and, and, and layers is in, in kind of like a, like parallel to the ground, whereas coal in, in here in, in Appalachia, in Pennsylvania, in West Virginia, in Kentucky, it follows the contouring of the, of the mountains. And as he was explaining, this is a really thick deposit, so it'll be laid out along here more perpendicular to, to the ground that I'm standing on but it'll have these huge deposits of 60 feet and it'll go down to just a few feet and then another big 60 feet. So they chase that all the way down the mountain, expose it, mine it, haul it off. The crazy thing that's happening too right now with coal and anthracite especially is that everybody's just stopped taking orders from Russia because of the war with Ukraine. So now American coal orders are going through the roof. Imagine that. So a lot of big coal mines in Appalachia that were previously just kind of doing their thing are now exploding because the world demand needs all this coal, but now that there's not Russian coal to fill it, it has to come from somewhere. That's amazing. And just look at this stuff. Keep, keep some for later. Put some, fill, it with our, fill our pockets with it, sell it. Behind me, we have a very rare machine, the CAT 6020B. It's a really, really, really cool machine. There are not very many of them in the United States. I've only seen a few of them. They're really uncommon. There's a few new ones out here in Pennsylvania. So they're using this machine. You can see Eric's stupid FPV drone flying around it. To open up the cut, strip away all the dirt, the muck, the mud, to expose the rock for drilling, and then to let the drag lines and the other machines come in and mine the coal. So they got this machine about a year ago to replace some of their older equipment and bought a 777 fleet with it. So the 6020 with 777s perfectly pass matched. Last week I saw a 6015 loading 777s. 6015s just a little bit too small. A 6020 is perfect for these, these machines. The last time we saw it too, you might have seen the YouTube video on it. 
it was it was opening this cut up like i said this cut didn't exist so it was top loading now it's loading off of a bench so it looks a hell of a lot better Uh, we're headed out of the pit right now. I, I want to include in this video a picture of what it looked like before versus what it looks like now, because or or old footage from when we were here before, because it is ridiculously different. Uh, we went for a ride in the 6020. Uh, went for a ride in the 6020. Eric flew his hobbyist drone around. Uh, <laughs> And now we're headed up to see the drag line, which is walking. So this is what they're after right here, anthracite, Pennsylvania, United States, American anthracite coal, used primarily for home heating. You can use it for a lot of different things, right? Mostly home heating. Mostly home heating. Yes, another thing I said incorrectly, I got a message from Reading Anthracite to clarify about the percentage of anthracite and where it goes, and here is the quote. Only about 10% of our market is for home heating and pizza. Bummer. The remaining 90% is used for steel making and furnaces, electric arc furnaces, titanium dioxide, which is white pigment products, and the sugar industry. In total, we sell about 600,000 tons a year and 60,000 goes to home heating. So there you go. But it's really good stuff because it's very dense, so uh, the amount of energy within this piece of coal is a lot more than some of the other mines we've seen. Like lignite is typically a lower type of energy. Anthracite is really, really good stuff. It can also be used for pizza ovens. Yeah, so the next time you have uh, uh, coal out of a coal-fired pizza oven, this is, this is probably the coal that you had in your pizza oven. So you're welcome. Um, so behind me is a Marion 7800, I know that because it says it on the top. I don't know much about old drag lines. Uh, this is an old drag line. When do you say? The 60s. Built in 1960. So it is significantly older than all three of us. Sign no significantly older than all three of us. No way. It sits up here. It has a 35 yard bucket. It strips for the coal. And then the loaders come in, mine the coal haul it to the plant, they crush, process it, sell it to the market. So that is what we got going. This morning they're moving it, 
Uh, it doesn't look like it's moving right now because it's, it's not moving, but apparently they're going to be moving it here pretty soon. As we've discussed, drag lines are uh, electrical, so they are powered by this trailing cable. And typically the really big drag lines have a really big trailing cable that are moved around by a tractor, whereas this drag line is a little bit smaller than the ones we've seen previously. So you can actually hand the uh, handle the trailing cable by hand using enormous rubber gloves that Eric is showing us off right now and a hook. Wow. <laughs> They're moving the Marion 7800 behind me back so that they can blast right in front of it. Um, the way the drag line moves is it's so heavy you can't put tracks or wheels underneath it really. So what happens is it has these feet. So it'll pick the feet up, put it behind it, and then it lifts itself up and scoots it along the ground. So it's like you're sitting, laying with your legs out on the ground, scooting along, scooting along, scooting along. So the front of the machine, or I guess the back of the machine, the furthest away from the direction of travel, it never leaves the ground. It just scoots along at about five or six feet at a time. So this whole thing lifts it all the way up, almost all the way off the ground, and just scoots it right along, sets it back down, and then resets. It's, it's pretty clever. All right, everybody, so that wraps us up at Reading Anthracite. Our second visit at Reading Anthracite. We have a third visit coming up. I don't know, it's not actually scheduled, but eventually where we'll actually see the greater operation because this is, it's everywhere. There's a lot of different mines. This was actually the smallest of their mines. We just came here to just see the, the 6020B because it's a cool machine. It's a super unique machine. Drag line, a little bit everything today. Eric Jumper on the microphone. What are you gonna, what are you gonna tell us? What's up? Okay, and with that, uh, we're all done here. Thanks for tuning in. Stay dirty, everybody.